Let's look at another um, nitrogen base compound or class of compounds, uh, the amidines. We spent two videos, I think it was in videos number 10 and number 11, um, looking at amides. Now let's consider amidines. Uh, they have the, the general structure like this. A carbon that has a double bond to a nitrogen, then a single bond to another nitrogen, and this can be some other organic group attached to that carbon. Now, both of these nitrogens, if you're looking at this one, thinking it has three sigma bonds, that it could be sp3 hybridized, as you saw in our previous videos. And that's true. Um, that would be perfectly valid. But actually, it is advantageous for this carbon to be sp2 hybridized. And let's see why. Here's nitrogen. It's orbital block diagram. And we say that it is possible for this to be, if, we, if it's sp3 hybridized, then this is the 2s orbital, the 3. Uh, p orbitals, they all merge together, as we discussed in the previous videos, to give us four equivalent sp3 molecular orbitals that form the corners of a tetrahedron, and we would have three single electrons available to form three single bonds, here, here, and here, and then there would be a lone share, or a lone pair of electrons in one, of the, in one of these sp3 orbitals. Um, that's true. What also can happen, though, is imagine one of these gets promoted from the s orbital to the p orbital, like this. It takes energy to do that, but it can be advantageous in this situation, and here's why. Now we have one s orbital and two p orbitals, they combine to give us three equivalent sp2 molecular orbitals. Each has a single electron. And they can form three chemical bonds, hydrogen, hydrogen, and carbon, just as if it was sp3 hybridized. The difference is, here we have a p orbital that was not hybridized, and the lone electron pair are now belong to the p orbital, the unhybridized p orbital. So these are going to be pi electrons. So now the lone shared, the lone pair of, of electrons here, they're not sp3, they are pi electrons. And it's advantageous to do that because the carbon that's connected to is bonded to this nitrogen where there's a double bond. So this nitrogen has a p orbital. that has an unshared pair of electrons, and then it is connected to or bonded to this carbon, which is connected to this nitrogen. And there are p orbitals here. Now, in this bond, of course, the p orbital of the carbon overlaps with the p orbital of the nitrogen, as you saw in our previous videos, um, like this. 
carbon nucleus, nitrogen nucleus, they overlap. The carbon has a single bond, the nitrogen has a single bond, and they share our single electron each. They share them in that pi bond. Now, what can happen here, though, is this type of situation. P orbital, P orbital, a single electron occupying it, a single electron occupying it, and then all of the p orbitals don't completely merge together, but they're, they merge close enough so that these one, two, three, four electrons are shared amongst these three different atoms, the nitrogen, the carbon, and the nitrogen. So it's not a genuine bond, but again, as we've been discussing in the previous videos, um, there's enough sharing amongst these three nuclei for these four electrons that it stabilized the system. So there's like a bond, and then a fraction of a bond, and here there's a bond, and a fraction of a bond, that's the resonance stabilization, or the sharing of these four electrons, um, these four pi orbital electrons amongst the three nuclei, again, that's that uh, uh, electron delocalization effect set up when you have adjacent p orbitals, and that's what we have here. A p orbital that has a lone electron pair, p orbitals that we're sharing an electron by overlapping, and now it can be this type of situation where we have the resonance. And again, as you saw in the previous videos, the way that you try to indicate this resonance situation by drawing the Lewis, different Lewis diagrams is we think of it like this. The nitrogen and the carbon are each sharing a pi electron. The nitrogen keeps both of them, so the carbon lost its electron, but now this one has a lone electron pair it can use to make the pi bond, so we have a double bond here. So the resulting Lewis structure is like this. That pi bond, of course, was destroyed. And this has a negative charge. Now, this nitrogen, this sp2 hybridized nitrogen, it also has, as you saw in the previous videos, an sp2 lone electron pair. Um, we don't always write them in because they don't participate in any of the resonance structures, but it, they do exist. So now this nitrogen with the negative charge, it has a negative charge because it stole the pi electron from that carbon. It has lone pair of sp2 electrons and a lone pair of pi electrons. This nitrogen donated both electrons to form that double bond, the pi bond, so it has a positive charge. So we see that the amidine molecule can have some resonance stabilization. It's not real strong because, again, you have separation of charges. Uh, not ideal, but permissible. And nitrogen is not real electronegative, and here it is carrying um, a negative charge. But there is some resonance stabilization um, of the uh, amidine molecule. Now, suppose though we take our amidine molecule and we put it into an acidic medium.
and maybe we should go over again, we've done it in previous videos, but we have some time, why this nitrogen, this sp2 hybridized nitrogen, has a lone pair of sp2 electrons. Remember the orbital diagram for nitrogen. Two s orbital and the p, and the p orbitals, a pair of electrons here, single here, and then to be sp2 hybridized, one s orbital and two p orbital merge to form three equivalent molecular orbitals, the sp2 orbitals. And there is a p orbital that was not hybridized that contains a single electron. So this nitrogen can form two sigma bonds, one to the carbon, one to the hydrogen. It has a single electron and a p orbital that can participate in a pi bond with the carbon, but we have this sp2 electron pair. And we also showed that up here. Now, if we put this into acid, this amidine, a proton can attach either here, here's an electron pair for it to attach to, or here either way, except it does not work either way. The proton can attach here, but it will not attach to these electrons. The reason being is these are lone pair pi electrons. They can participate in resonance stabilization. But if a proton attaches to them, then there's no resonance stabilization. So the proton will not attach here. It will attach instead to the sp2 lone electron pair to give us this structure. So a proton attaches here now we have two hydrogens. This has a positive charge because it's just a proton that attached here. This is putting up both electrons to form this bond to the hydrogen. And of course, the hydrogen is not donating any electron. So this is going to have a positive charge. Now, let's take a look then at the protonated form of the amidine and see what kind of a resonance structure it has. So we have Remember, these are pi electrons here, the, that lone pair. Those are the lone pi electrons that that nitrogen has. And then we have this. with a positive charge. And now what can happen is we can imagine this nitrogen is sharing a pi electron, puts up a pi electron, the carbon puts up a pi electron to form that pi bond. We can imagine the nitrogen keeping both of those pi electrons, leaving this carbon without electron deficient and no bond, but then these lone pair here are pi orbital or pi electrons. They can come in and form a bond with carbon. You get the double bond, but the nitrogen is donating uh, the pair of electrons to form that bond. So we have this. That is unchanged. double bond, 
And because this is donating both electrons, this has a positive charge. No longer a pi bond here, just a single bond with two electron or two hydrogens. And normally this would have a negative charge because it swiped an electron from the carbon, but had a positive charge to begin with, so there is no charge on that nitrogen. So here then would be the other resonant, the resonant structure, the other Lewis structure of the protonated amidine molecule. Notice here now, there's no separation of charges, and the parent compound, the unprotonated form, we had separation of charges. Here we do not. Here the positive charge was here, now it's here, we have charge dispersion, and also now notice that, again, these molecules are symmetrical. So here the, the double bond is on the right, now it's on the left. Here the single bond is on the left, now it's on the right. So these are symmetrical. We have charge dispersion instead of charge separation. So the protonated form of the amidine molecule by putting the proton here on the sp2 electron pair, not the pi electron pair, gives a protonated amidine. That protonated amidine has a very strong, a very good resonant system. Therefore, we expect amidines to be very basic, which indeed they are. So that's it. That concludes it for this video. Um, the, uh, the playlist for the video, or for all the videos, is found at the website digital-university.org.